Can anyone recommend a good cleaner? So in this episode, we're gonna talk about cleaning recruitment and what you need to be doing for your short-term rental business at all times to stay ahead of the game. Cleaners are your best friends and your worst nightmares all wrapped up in one. I was having a conversation lately with uh, a good friend of mine who's got a very, very successful short-term rental business in Europe. And we were saying it's madness how cleaners effectively run these multi-million pound businesses. You know, at the end of the day, if they don't show up, it's your business that's affected. If they do a bad clean, it's your business that's affected. If they do a great clean, it's your business that thrives. If they're consistent in what they do and they show up all the time and you have no issues, it's your business that thrives. The, the cleaning is the most important part of a short-term rental business. Yeah, I see so many people asking for recommendations on Facebook, on WhatsApp groups. Has anybody got any cheap cleaners? Has any, can anybody recommend a good cleaner at a good price? Well, for me, a good price is whatever gets you a five-star review because that five-star review is the difference between your business thriving or not. And it, it is as simple as that. But what you need to be doing, cleaners come and go. You have to accept that. And as you're gonna grow your portfolio, you're gonna need more and more cleaners, which ultimately means, unfortunately, more and more headaches managing them. Now, you've got several options. You can either have them in internally, you can work with freelancers, or you can hire agencies and it's their problem. I do a mixture of everything within the portfolios. I wouldn't say any of them are better than another. I just think it comes down to you and how you're managing them. We use an app called Get Properly, which is a great piece of kit. And that app allows us to monitor the cleaners, keep on top of them whilst they're actually in the house doing the work. It allows us to track the time that they're spending so we can work out the money. And it is a really, really good way for us as a team to be able to check on our properties remotely and also have evidence as well should we need it to file claims against guests for things go missing or damages. But in the main, what I find is people leave the whole cleaner recruitment, like a lot of things in business, to the last minute. What you want to be doing all the time is having adverts out for cleaners all over the place because cleaners go up and down, just like a Premier League footballer. Their performance level goes up and down and they need managing at all times. So you might have a really good cleaner and therefore think, oh, I don't need to find anyone for that property. But then three months later, they turn into a bad cleaner and then you're left high and dry because you haven't done anything about a contingency. Now it's easier as you grow your portfolio because naturally you can give them more and more jobs. And you, you know, whereas if you've only got one property, you're pretty much only using one cleaner and you know you couldn't share that between another one because there'd probably be not enough work to be able to incentivize them to keep cleaning for you. But as you grow, you will be able to then, you know, share your cleans around and be able to almost like market and split test. So you know you could put different cleans in each property and see who see who performs the best, see what see, see you get the better reviews from. And you know, you've always got to be recruiting. So for me, always have an advert on Indeed uh, in the locations that you're operating in and put a decent attractive package on there because if you attract some good cleaners, they will stay with you. So you want to be recruiting on Facebook as well in all the groups, WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups. There's so many places where you just want to have adverts out for cleaners as well as scheduling time each week to recruit cleaners, ringing Gumtree ads, ringing uh, Indeed ads, Yellow Pages ads, whatever it might be. There are plenty of places where cleaners, especially freelance ones, are advertising their services. Now there is a difference between a residential cleaner and a commercial cleaner who can clean an Airbnb or hotel style operation. That needs to be discussed at the beginning and you need to lay out exactly what it is that they're getting into, especially the timeframes that they have to work under and how they may have to go from location to location very quickly. And quite frankly, they may walk into a bomb site one day and it might knock their schedule. So you need to make sure that they're gonna be flexible for that as well. It's better to get all this out at the beginning because if you don't, then you're only gonna run into more problems further down the line. And if you're constantly recruiting, then you should never really have a cleaner shortage. 
I have a, it's, it's actually a spreadsheet, but it's called a black book. So like the old school little black book. And what we do is we put in all of the cleaners that we've spoken to, their phone numbers, their email addresses, and what locations they clean. We do the same for maintenance guys as well, handymen. All the locations, what their name is, what they cover, what type of service they are, plumber, joiner, whatever it might be. And then we've always got that as what we call our black book, so we can then ring anybody that we may need if we ever find ourselves in a shortage position. So don't scrimp and scrape with them, you know. Not all cleaners are motivated by money. Not all staff are motivated by money. You've got to find out what motivates them. But in the main, you want to be paying well, you want to have a good loyalty scheme, you want to be recognizing them and making them feel part of your company. Even if they're freelancers or agencies, make them feel part of your company. And by doing so, you'll get more from them. You know, give them bonuses. If every time you get a five star review, give them something, whether it's an Amazon voucher, some more money, some flowers, a bottle of wine, it does not matter. It goes so far. The cost of that five star review to your business is huge. The revenue that you will get based on five stars versus anything less in the long term future is massive. So to buy some flowers or to give a bottle of wine away every time you get one, honestly, it is the best investment that you can make in your staff, whether they are employed, not employed, it does not matter. They are your team and you need to treat them like they are your team. And if you do that, you will end up with some really engaged people who will stay with you for a long, long time. And you know, as you grow, you can half the time help them grow their businesses. Most of them might just be little freelance cleaners that work with multiple uh, short-term rental hosts. And if you're growing your portfolio and they want to grow their businesses, because you know most of them are quite entrepreneurial, then they, they, they favor that and, and it's a win-win for both people. So you know you can say, listen, I'm gonna help you grow your business whilst I grow my business, we'll do it side by side. You know, everyone's a winner. And you know, by laying all that out at the beginning, it really does set it aside rather than just treating them like, hey, can I have a claim? Uh, you know, we'll send you the details, just clean and give me an invoice. That's not really gonna fly long term, and that's when you're gonna end up in a tailspin, you're gonna always get left short, your cleans aren't gonna be great, so on and so forth. So for me, top tip, pay well, always be recruiting, use apps and softwares to monitor, and look after your staff, and they will look after you.